Welcome one and all, I'm Dave. I'm the man referred to in hush whispers as Jacob. Yeah, and today we're going to be talking about the upcoming Ryzen 2 processors from AMD and what they'll mean for the processor market this year. The new Pinnacle Ridge chips are the direct successors to the Ryzen CPUs launched in March last year, the processors which almost single-handedly shook up the market and forced Intel to make some radical redesigns. Yeah, and the Ryzen 2 processors? Second Gen Ryzen. Sorry, what? Second Gen Ryzen. We can't call them Ryzen 2, it's way too confusing. Mm, yeah, okay, you're 100% you're right on that, I'll give you that. Yeah, with AMD releasing the Ryzen 7, Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 3 processor, processor ranges, calling the upcoming chips Ryzen 2 just makes them sound like low-power dual cores. True, but it is an easy shorthand anyway. Well, anyway, the Ryzen 2 chips are coming out soon, and here's everything you need to know about AMD's next processors. The new Ryzen cores will hit the shelves in April of this year, just over a year after the first generation of Ryzen CPUs were released into the wild. And like that initial Ryzen release, it's looking likely that AMD will follow the same launch cadence, with the top-end Ryzen 7 range hitting the market first and the Ryzen 5 and 3 chips following later on. That would have the Ryzen 7, probably 2800X, launching in April, with the Ryzen 5 range dropping a month later and the low-end Ryzen 3 chips released another month or so after that. Along with the new processors, we're also going to be treated to new 400 series motherboards too, starting out with the X470. Before you start panicking over AMD following Intel's lead and switching sockets for Pinnacle Ridge, the new boards are still using the AM4 sockets, offering cross-compatibility between the different Ryzen motherboards and chips. Just don't forget you'll need to BIOS update to get the 2000 series chips operating in an old 300 series board. Though we did say that about the Raven Ridge APUs and people still got uppity when their new chips didn't work in an old board. Arguably the most important spec for the new 2nd gen Ryzen chips is the advanced production process the new CPUs will use. They're moving from the existing Ryzen's 14 nanometer lithography to a new 12 nanometer design. Yeah, and AMD are then calling the underlying processor architecture Zen Plus. It's not really a new architecture per se, but it toes the line Intel have been playing out with subsequent mild architectural changes themselves. That's not to be confused with the subsequent Zen 2 design which is set to follow next year and will provide architectural changes to the initial layout. That's going to be a 7 nanometer product and AMD confirmed at the pre-CS event in January that they have now completed the design for Zen 2. It's unlikely that AMD will be squeezing any more new cores into the new Ryzen generation though. Despite the name suggesting smaller cores, there won't actually be any more space afforded by the Zen Plus architecture to allow it. Whether they're really talking about actual 12 nanometer transistors inside the Zen Plus design, we're not entirely sure. James Pryor, one of AMD's prominent desktop dudes, told us at CES that the 12 nanometer design is not an area statement, it's a power efficiency statement. The area is not going to change much, but the ability for us to manipulate the frequency voltage curve has improved. So that means we're expecting the same 8 core 16 thread design for the Ryzen 7 chips, and 6 cores 12 threads with the odd 4 core 8 thread chip thrown in for the Ryzen 5, and then the same resolutely quad core layout for Ryzen 3 at the bottom. Given that the Raven Ridge APUs have given us the first 2000 series chips, albeit without the 12 nanometer Zen Plus architecture, with the same relative core counts, that's looking like a pretty safe bet. For us gamers, however, the more important spec will be the support of the Precision Boost 2 feature. That's the one that came in with the Raven Ridge mobile and desktop APUs. The original Precision Boost that came in with Ryzen would only offer the CPU's boosted clock speed when just two cores were in use. That meant if a game were to offload a tiny amount of work onto a third core, it would instantly limit the clock speed to the base clock no matter what. But with Precision Boost 2, that's changed, with the max boost speeds being more closely linked to the available power and thermal headroom. That should mean that the Ryzen 2 processors will be more capable gaming chips than their forebears. There will also be a boost to the base clock speeds for the second gen Ryzen chips too, as leaked benchmarks from SciSoft and Geekbench have shown the new Ryzen 5 2600 with a standard 3.4GHz clock speed where the 1600 had a 3.2GHz base. <laughs> But as we said earlier, the new Pinnacle Ridge processors will bring with them new 400 series motherboards, all sporting the same AM4 socket first introduced just before Ryzen last year. It's a socket that will stick with AMD's processors all the way through to 2020. That means the first gen Ryzen chips will fit into a 400 series board, and the upcoming Ryzen 2 CPUs will work with the old 300 series. It's all one happy ancestral family. Well, so long as you make good with the BIOS updates anyways. That means the new X470 board isn't really going to be offering that much more than the current X370. There's a little more functionality in terms of USB connections, and there's a possibility that you'll get a little more overclocking headroom out of the newer boards. But that's really it. The Advanced Precision Boost feature will give us the gaming goods on a 300 series board, so it's probably going to be a bit of a tricky one for the manufacturers to get people to make the upgrade when they do finally launch. 
Given that there isn't really going to be a huge difference in spec between the first Summit Ridge Ryzen chips and the new Pinnacle Ridge processors, there's unlikely to be a massive change in the overall performance. We're expecting the Precision Boost 2 feature to deliver better gaming performance than the first gen Ryzen chips, but then only where CPU power makes any difference anyway. AMD have said that they think the switch from 14 nanometer to 12 nanometer lithographies will give you around 10% extra CPU performance just because of the die shrink. So by adding on an extra 200 megahertz onto the base clock of the second gen, that should give it a little more help. Hopefully the improved power efficiency of the 12 nanometer process, the new 400 series boards and the mature CPU design will provide us with a little bit more overclocking headroom too. Despite using a non-metallic thermal interface material for the Raven Ridge APUs for reasons of price, they're switching back to using the same soldered heat spreader design they had in place for the first gen rise. We'll have to wait until we get our review processors into the test rig before we can give any concrete performance numbers, but we are starting to see early benchmarks springing out of ever leaky internet databases. Yes, yeah, the classic ones. So the latest one comes from Geekbench, where it shows a CPU with the AMD Ryzen ZD2600 BBM68AF moniker. It doesn't seem like much of a stretch to assume that's an engineering sample for the Ryzen 5 2600, and it also suggests a base clock of 3.4 GHz and a boost clock of 3.8 GHz. If that 200 MHz were to translate to the 2600X, that would give it a 3.8 GHz base and a 4.2 GHz boost. So compared with relative Geekbench scores for the old Ryzen 5 1600, the leaked 2600 numbers show only a single core improvement of 3%, but around 15% boost in the multi-threaded benchmark performance. But those are really only early numbers and don't tell us a lot about the benchmarks we use. We're going to have to wait and see for those. So that's everything we know and everything you need to know about the upcoming second generation Ryzen processors. We'll have the goods in a test rig soon with the April release not far off now. So thanks for watching and if you liked what you've seen and heard, give us the old like and subscribe, a cheery wave and all that good stuff. And check back here and on the website for more PC gaming and hardware goodness. Thanks for watching. Cheers.